Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 646. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about avoiding common gift-giving mistakes. And recently, I did a podcast on how not to overspend during the holidays, which was podcast number 643. And if you haven't listened to that one, I suggest you listen to that one first because I give you some really good ideas on how not to go over budget and how you can really nail the right present for your special someone that you're giving gifts to. But in this article, I thought this was great because it talked about common mistakes that people are making with gift giving. And this is so important because a lot of us just overspend during the holidays and we're literally paying for that for the next six months. Some people are paying for it for more than a year after the holiday. And this is something that can be really avoidable. So along with my great podcast on how not to overspend, where I share some really personal things, I think it's important to also go over what are the common mistakes that people are making so you can avoid those too. This comes to us from marketwatch.com and it was written by Leslie Albrecht. And it says, we've had thousands of years of practice, but humans still have a lot to learn about the art and science of gift giving. In fact, we often fail at it given the significant chunks of presents, $70 billion worth by one count, that get returned after the holiday season. Nearly half, 46% of consumers return one to three gifts over the holidays, according to research by Optoro, a returns management platform that retailers use. With that in mind, MarketWatch brings you our latest Best New Ideas in Money series, Gifts That Pay Off. We won't profile the latest hot gadgets to put on your holiday shopping list. Instead, we'll spotlight presents that can pay off in the sense that they could potentially help enrich recipients, literally and figuratively. For example, gifts that could go up in value or boost someone's career. We'll also explore gifts that could pay off by improving someone's well-being, productivity, or happiness over the long run. When done right, gift giving can help us build better relationships and provide our loved ones with lasting happiness. Our gift giving fumbles can have real consequences. Billions of wasted dollars, stress and anxiety experienced by both the giver and receiver, and in the worst case scenario, ruined relationships. Is it any wonder that December is one of the most popular times for romantic relationships to end? Luckily, there's a burgeoning field of research on the right and wrongs of gift giving. People are spending billions of dollars in the wrong way, said Julian Givey, an assistant professor of marketing at West Virginia University, who has published several papers on gift giving. It's important to study gift giving because by pointing people in the right direction, we can help them improve their relationships with their family and friends. Here are some of the most common mistakes and how to avoid them. First, we focus too much on the wow factor. Gift givers are sometimes motivated by how they think a recipient will react in the moment they unwrap the present. So they seek out gifts that they know will probably elicit a delighted smile, multiple studies have concluded. Meanwhile, we underestimate how much recipients value practical and useful gifts. Gifters should think about what they want from the receivers, an instant smile and a happy squeal or something of greater long-term value, said Adele Yang, an assistant professor at National University of Singapore and co-author of a study on smile-seeking in gift-giving. Eleanor Williams, associate professor of marketing at Washington University in St. Louis, was inspired to study this phenomenon after one particularly disappointing gift exchange with her parents. She had given her mom and dad a gift wish list of mundane items she wanted, 
like a carrot peeler, non-slip yoga mat, and electric tea kettle. They gave her a block of pink Himalayan sea salt from the high-end cooking store Sur La Table. The roughly $50 gift was on trend and a surprise, but she returned it immediately and used the gift to buy the tea kettle. She later co-authored a paper called Why Certain Gifts Are Great to Give, But Not to Get. Recipients appreciate fun gifts, but they also have a variety of needs and interests, Williams said. They also have lives and offices and kitchens, and they need things like carrot peelers and flash drives. Wow gifts can be expensive, but recipients can be just as satisfied by a cheaper, more mundane present. One possible solution to this common gift-giving error could be to combine a more practical gift with a fun one, say a kitchen blender with margarita mix. Williams and her fellow researchers have suggested Williams' advice is to ask people what they want, a step she says people often forget, and then actually get them that item, another step people forget. If you're at a loss when selecting a gift, go for something that can be consumed, like a bottle of wine or movie ticket, she said. That way, there's less of a chance the gift will end up crammed in a closet for eternity. So before I go on to the next item, that's really funny because that's exactly what I recommended in my podcast, the previous podcast that I mentioned. Because once you ask people what they really want, then you're getting them what they want and they're going to be thrilled, even if you're not as thrilled with it being very exciting like a carrot peeler. It really helps you not overspend because you're not guessing about what they want and you're not trying to get them a better gift by giving them multiple gifts because sometimes we can feel like it's not enough or we second guess ourselves and think we should have done more or we worry that maybe they're spending more on us. There's all kinds of crazy rationalization that goes on in our mind when we're gift giving. The third mistake to avoid is being a sentimental Santa. People worry a sentimental gift will either be a smash hit or a total flop, and they assume a more superficial gift, a less thoughtful present, but one that has attributes the recipient is known to like, will get a favorable, albeit lukewarm, reception. So they take the safe route and go with the superficial gift, a 2017 study published in the Journal of Consumer Psychology found. One of the examples in the study had gift givers choosing between giving a friend a large framed high quality photo of their favorite musician versus giving them a smaller, lower quality framed snapshot of the two friends together on a day they had a lot of fun together. The two choices were equally priced. Though recipients generally preferred the more sentimental snapshot, most givers chose to give the superficial gift of the musician photo. In other words, givers' fears of getting it wrong prevents them from getting it right, the researchers wrote. Sentimental gifts that reference a shared memory or a personal story give us more lasting pleasure. And like the experiential gifts, they deepen our bond with the giver, professional Givey found in a study he's currently working on. There are economic benefits to better job gift giving because we waste time and money when we shop for presents that end up returned or stuffed in a closet but it's the relationship enhancing benefits of better gift giving that may be most important, Williams said. When recipients feel well thought of, that's a bonus of a good gift. When it really matches what they're looking for, it makes them feel seen in a way. The next mistake to avoid is when we let our own desires guide us. Gift giving is supposed to be a chance for us to be selfless, but it doesn't always work out that way. In fact, we sometimes intentionally give bad gifts out of self-interest, according to two studies carried out by Givey. Someone who owns an older Apple iPhone, for example, might not want to give their brother the newer model because it would make them feel less pleased with their own phone and be envious. Likewise, we sometimes don't like to give gifts that are identical to items we already own because the gift giver may feel less unique. Wow, that's really interesting, but I can see the point that they're making there. The next mistake to avoid is we give material goods when we should give experiences. Several studies suggest experiences provide more lasting happiness than material possessions. But people give things as gifts in part because they don't want to be empty-handed at a gift exchange, which can feel awkward. 
said Cassie Molliner Holmes, an associate professor of marketing at UCLA's Anderson School of Management. People also think of things as lasting longer than experiences. That's not actually correct. Experiences are far more emotionally engaging and surprisingly are more memorable. Even though it's not sitting on your shelf, we remember experiences, and we adapt more slowly to those memories so they continue to have the emotional effect, whereas things we get used to, Moliner Holmes said. Giving friends and family experiences like tickets to a Broadway show instead of tangible items such as a wireless Sonos speaker also has the added benefit of deepening relationships. Recipients felt closer to givers after receiving experiences as presents. Cindy Chan, an assistant professor at the University of Toronto, found in a 2017 study. That's likely because of the strong emotions we feel during experiences versus how we feel about material objects, Chan said. And finally, the last mistake to avoid, the world's greatest gift may be time. Spending money as little as $40 to buy our way out of tasks we don't like to do such as cleaning, cooking, or lawn maintenance, can also boost our happiness, a 2017 study of more than 6,000 people in four countries concluded. And that investment can literally buy us time to spend on an activity we truly enjoy, like reading a book, napping, or strolling in the park. One big tip about gifting experiences, take the recipient's age into consideration. Younger people tend to get more happiness from extraordinary experiences, Think going to a Beyonce concert or taking a hang gliding lesson. While older people often derive more happiness from calm and peaceful ordinary events, like going out to lunch with a friend, being in nature, and simple treats like a yummy glass of wine, 2014 research by Moliner Holmes suggested. Some may take issue with characterizing certain preferences as being for old people, said Moliner Holmes, because sadly in our culture, old has a negative connotation. She prefers to see her research as demonstrating the wisdom people gain through experience. Older people tend to realize that their time is precious and therefore savor more. A lot of my efforts are to help young people realize their time is precious so they become equally wise and savor more, Moliner Holmes said. End of article. Well, I agree with older people wanting different gifts. I remember when my parents and grandparents were alive It was about usually giving them something that they could use, like something they could eat or something they could drink. They didn't want things. They didn't want clutter on their shelves. They already had everything they really needed, and they didn't really want another tie or pair of shoes. They really wanted practical things, things that they used every day or things that they would just use up. Or even better, these experiences are what they really treasured spending time together with their loved ones. So I hope this gives you some good ideas. I'm gonna review these again really quickly. These are the things to avoid. Avoid focusing too much on the wow factor or being a sentimental Santa or don't let your own desires guide you. Don't give material goods when we should give experiences and think about giving gifts of time. Again, these are so important to be really thoughtful about your gift giving so that you don't overspend, so that you don't have to spend months next year paying it off, and more importantly, so that the gifts that you give are really loved by the people that receive them. I think it really is crucial to ask what they want because we might not think that thing is so great, but they might think it's the coolest thing ever. So by asking what they want, and giving them what they want, you're assured to give the greatest gift without having to guess and without having to overspend. And by the way, for anyone who is celebrating American Thanksgiving this week, I just want to wish you a very, very happy Thanksgiving. I am so grateful for you. You're on my list of things I'm feeling grateful for. And thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to the podcast. I love you and feel so, so grateful. I hope you have a blessed and peaceful and relaxing Thanksgiving weekend with your family, friends, and loved ones. 
If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as podcasts are available so you never miss one of them and can get to your financial freedom faster. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.